Madam President, distinguished members of the UN Security Council, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank the Presidency of the Council for giving the floor to civil society organizations and witnesses of atrocities. In 12 days from today, the world will mark the 10th anniversary of the largest chemical massacre that the 21st century witnessed, which took place in Eastern Ghouta on August 21st, 2013, and killed over 1,200 people and injured over 10,000. I witnessed the Ghouta massacre. And through my work as a member of the medical team of Ghouta, and later I, after I fled, out of Syria with other civil society organizations, I have been engaged in supporting the medical response to chemical attacks and the documentation of usage of chemical weapons in Syria. An unfortunate experience that I, as a dentist, shouldn't have learned if there were any measures of accountability. In the morning of that day, I walked out of my office to a nearby school that we had transformed into a documentation decontamination center. I can't forget the scene of the school halls. Bodies were scattered around, turning the child's sacred space into a vast funeral home. The towns of Wuta were then under siege by the Assad regime and engulfed in a war where chemical weapons was one among many other war crimes occurring simultaneously. We didn't have protection gears. We didn't have that time enough space for each patient that need care, needed care uh, after they been suffering, suffocating from chemical weapons. But we had hopes that time that if we expose those crimes, we will prevent future attacks in Syria and globally. After the uh, chemical attack few days, the investigators of the United Nations mission to investigate allegation of usage of chemical weapons entered Uta. They were already in Syria investigating other attacks. They collected samples, they uh, interviewed witnesses, and soon this very council adopted resolution 2118 on the use of chemical weapons in Syria. Since resolution 2118, and since Syria became bound by the Chemical Weapons Convention, a treaty signed by almost all states of the world, we should have absolute compliance. Instead, more than 170 chemical attacks have been reported in Syria. In 10 years, more than 1,500 were killed and over 15,000 were injured by the chemical weapons of the Assad regime. This is not a message to us, to the victims, to the witnesses, to the civil society organization. It's not a message to us, the people of Wuta and the people of other towns in Syria which, which was, were attacked by chemical weapons. We were gassed and killed, but we did not write the Chemical Weapon Convention, nor the UN Charter. You did. This was a clear message from the Syrian regime that they disregard international institutions and treaties. And the response from the international community, including this council, was limited to further investigations, but doing nothing Syrians toward accountability. Doing nothing is very hard when you see the rescue and medical teams risking their lives to save one more life. Or when you see them enter the contaminated area without a protection gear to bring you one more piece of evidence. On April 4th, 2017, one of the civil defense volunteers was pregnant and she lost her baby while risking other people after the chemical attack in Khan Sheikhoun. 10 days before, Dr. Ali Darwish, who used to work in Alatani Hospital, died when his hospital was attacked by a chemical bomb dropped by the Assad Air Forces on his hospital. Knowing all of that and doing nothing is a very hard job. Hiding behind a Russian veto that might block an attempt toward a court doesn't make it easier. And no, sanctions are not enough and are not the accountability that victims want. Members of the Council, you received 
heaps of reports from the gym and the IIT, the joint investigation mechanism that you established and the uh, uh, and uh, uh, the IIT of OBCW, confirming the responsibility of the Syrian regime of chemical attacks. Because of impunity, the Syrian regime has ended an international norm that was agreed for so long. The risk of using chemical weapons is still there. The same regime that used it with impunity is still in power. The same Russian allies are still supporting Syria's war criminals. Other dictators worldwide might get the wrong message if they see those toward accountability are blocked. In response to the heaps of evidence and investigations, denial has been the Syrian regime's strategy, employing several tactics such as manipulating evidence, presented false witnesses, intimidation survivors, witnesses, and their families, pressuring investigators, whether individuals or institutions, investing resources in running media, media disinformation campaigns. These tactics are being used in other countries as well. A research found that the same social media accounts were used in denying war crimes in Syria and Ukraine as well. What a surprise. Among the survivors of Duma attack on April 7, uh, 2018, I know a family of four. Later, they were displaced to north of Syria and they also witnessed the February earthquake that hit south of Turkey and north of Syria. The father told me once that more than chemical attacks, more than the suffering of forced displacement of his hometown, and more than the earthquake, seeing his two children, remembering all the memories from the night of the, of the chemical attack where they, when they were in a shelter after the earthquake with their neighbors facing the unknown, facing the death. The most painful for him is when people ask him, if is it true that Assad used chemical weapons? Denial made us more determined to make our voices heard. It made witnesses sharpen their memories to bring every detail when they testify. It made investigators stricter in their methodologies so their reports will be more solid in front of any court. Madam President, Your Excellencies. In Syria, we are lucky or maybe unlucky by having all those investigation bodies with all those acronyms. It's even hard to remember all of them. COI, GIM, IIT, FFM, DAT, etc. The Syrian civil society, families of victims, rescue and medical teams cooperated with all of them. Those investigation bodies did their job, and you did. When Russia vetoed the renewal of the mandate of the gym, there was a way to keep those investigations ongoing. And the IIT was established in an unprecedented vote at the Organization for Pro Pro Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. And you still can, similar to that. There are ways to bypass a potential veto against establishing a court, against referring all perpetrators to the, I the International Criminal uh, Court. There are ways to stop doing nothing. Doing nothing is undermining the brave work of those investigators. It's undermining the international institutions and treaties that you created. It's undermining the work of OBCW that you built and protected around the norm. That you said that this storm is universal. It's undermining you, this council, which is supposed to be responsible for peace globally. 10 years after the Ghouta massacre, 10 years after the resolution 2118 should make everyone think what is the message from this council to the Syrian regime? What is the message from the OBCW state members, not only to the Syrian regime, but also to other perpetrators and also to the investigators who have been working tirelessly? We will keep the fight to explore concrete options to reinstate the norm of prohibition of chemical weapons by finding ways to hold all perpetrators to account. 
by alongside the states who believe that this exceptional use of chemical weapons requires exceptional measures to say no, no to impunity. Thank you very much.